You think you're the first one to do a film road trip in Iceland? You can take a picture of a waterfall, black sand, sheep, road leading to a mountain. Is that a Leica? I think you might be overcompensating for something there, bud. Yeah, yeah, this is a really good photo spot, but I'd appreciate it if you got off my damn lawn. This video is sponsored by Richard Photo Lab. They took the pedestrian bullshit that I took on this trip and turned those frames into award-winning images. Thanks to them, I've now won four Pulitzers, a Nobel Peace Prize, and a trip to space with Richard Branson. Thanks, Richard Photo Lab. Without you, I'd be riding Bezos' space dick. They gonna let us run this? So light. Huh. If the medium is the reason for the project, the project is already a failure. I wonder what that means. Probably to go take some film photos in Iceland. Before this, you actually missed a pretty important piece of the story. Would you like any ketchup for that medium curly fry? And now you're caught up on everything that happened the week leading up to this trip. As a reminder, we are in fact the first photographers to ever take film photos in Iceland. We're here for seven days, which means we can only see about 16 space churches. This is our drive. Some notable things to point out. Good pizza here. Puffins. Space dongs. Good pizza here. Space church. Average pizza here. And they're out of avocados in the entire north of the country. Which I guess, like, that's fine. My daughter has an Here we are, in an airport, taking photos. Contacts T3. Portra 800, that's the first one I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna set the bar real, real low. Don't worry, it can get just a little bit lower. There you go. The eBay listing said that this camera would make me a real truest professional, A++++ award-winning photographer, and that's why it was so expensive. I'm starting to think I got scammed. Good news though, my photography skills are in fact in this blue bag, and I didn't have the bag, that's why I wasn't good yet. We've checked into our Airbnbs, this is Cabin Marshall, this is, this is Kevin Taylor, and uh, this is the Black Sand Beach just right over there. Really, really close. Inside, we were actually being briefed by our guide for the trip, uh, Grainy Days, Jason. By Icelandic, I mean something unpronounceable to the rest of the world. Jason was compensated very well for this trip, uh, the one cent in ad revenue. Uh, CPM here is probably pretty low, so enjoy that one cent. This was just an excuse for me to show you my favorite shirt that unfortunately you can't buy, but you can buy all the other shirts that you see throughout this video. Hi, I'm Jonah Hill, and welcome to Iceland. Come on inside. The gear that I brought on this trip is all film photography equipment. I'm going to walk you through it. Cheers to Iceland. First, we have the Canon AE-1. Next up, the Leica M6, 35 millimeter F2. Made in Canada, this lens. I made lenses in Canada, this Leica company. First time hearing of them. Bought this at a thrift store for $5. $5. Fujifilm GA 645W Professional. Medium format style point and shoot, fixed lens, um, very easy to use. And then maybe one of the most hyped cameras, if the, if the M6 is not the most hyped camera in the world, the Contax T3 might be. And we have one of those on this trip uh, on loan. Uh, we also have with us the Fujifilm Square Instax in terracotta, orangey red. And an Ilford color disposable camera. With me, I also have two Gigantic bags of film. I brought all the film that I purchased and uh, this pasta sauce. And um, no, nope, come back. Where are you going? Here in Iceland, every Airbnb comes with a Kodak Portra garden. Behind me, you'll find ours. These rolls begin at ISO 160 and they ripen into 400 and 800 very quickly. Let's see if any are ready for picking. Our crop is coming along nicely. Portra 400 here. Uh, this appears to be a Portra 800. 120 roll, so that's ready for picking. Um, another Portra, that's 400. We'll leave that for another day. And uh, Portra 800. With our film harvested, we're now ready for some sunset photography. Then as Iceland does, the weather got immediately terrible. Wow. 90 perfectly frames the uh, 
Icelandic phallus. Yeah. First rule of photography, don't fall over. Second rule of photography, find good light. Today, we have no light. We've come into the cave. Whoa, Kenny. And uh, I'm switching my 120 medium format roll out to Portra 800, which we grew in the garden earlier. Portra 800. All right, here we go. And boom goes dynamite. No sunset, no light, color film. Maybe a mistake, maybe not a mistake. Oh, yeah. Standing up this week on photographing space dongs in Iceland. Uh, we photograph space dongs one more time. Now with Portra 800. help. I'm a spicy boy, boy. I'm a spicy boy, boy. Marshall, did you know that when I was a young boy, my father took me to the city to see a marching band? He said, son, when you grow up, Will you be the savior of the broken, the beaten, and the damned? Because one day, I'll leave you a phantom to lead you in the summer to join the Black Parade. The Leica M6 is the camera that has been finding the most use on our trip so far. I've been using the 35 millimeter uh, F2 Summicron the most. Uh, it is, uh, I think the V3 of it. It is made in Canada, actually. I thought that was very interesting. I have the 35 and the 50 of it. I didn't bring the 50 on this trip. Uh, I love the fact that Leica designs lenses that are amazing and they're that small. I also have the 90 F4 that I've been using way more than I thought. I wasn't even gonna bring it. I borrowed this from BJ Photo, our local camera shop, and I am so happy that I did because I've used it probably almost half the time. And then also with me, I have the 28 F2.8, which is another amazing lens. I also have uh, two filters with me. Uh, I haven't shot any black and white film on the Leica yet, uh, but I do have a yellow filter. Uh, I would say the most general useful filter for black and white photography. Uh, basically what it's gonna do is it's going to, um, here at least, it's going to bring the greens up a little bit so that you actually can see some lightness in the greens and it's just not gonna crush it all together in kind of the shadows. Um, you could actually use a green filter if you wanted, but I find that it feels a little too aggressive. Uh, yellow, kind of more general filter. And I also have this 10 stop ND. And it's funny because it's in this, this big case and then you reveal it and it's this tiny. 39 millimeter filter. And this is for if I wanna photograph some waterfalls and I wanna get that really long, slow shutter speed. That's like a kit. Let's get back to the Iceland. So we've just checked into our Airbnb and they didn't really mention that there were no uh, doors or windows or furniture or beds. Yeah, there's a bit of a bed down there. 35 millimeter, he wants to use the flash. Not going to use the flash. There we go. And that's what you call a natural frame. Frames. Frames. Do you use natural frames? Frames. Frames. Interlinked. Interlinked. A technology and creative inter I'm really far away. This is a good stop. Oh, this is a good wall. I don't know if that's a photo. Onward, Marshall. This is the Fuji GA645. W, w stands for wide. The non-wide version of this is a great portrait camera. It's basically a point and shoot medium format camera. Very easy to take with you. And uh, we're gonna load some Portra 400 in this. Load up the 40 3 d 3 I think it sounds like a video game.
Dadah. The film that we're using on this trip Over here is the black and white. Over here is the color. Black and white film, 400 tracks will be the most used on this trip. It will be in my Canon AE-1. Bonus black and white film, this uh, Sin Still. Black and white, 120 roll. Maybe get to that, maybe not, I don't know. Um, other bonus films, some more black and white, Lomo film, and uh, this purple film. No idea if I'll use this, probably not. Moving into color films, Portra 400 will be likely the main film that I'm using this entire trip, as well as Portrait 800, whenever I run out of 400, um, because I only had so much 400. And then I have two color positive films, uh, Ektachrome 100, E100, as well as uh, the number of rolls of Provia. I don't know why I brought so many, but uh, I have a lot of rolls of this. I have very few rolls of this, I think two or three. And then in the medium format camera, I will be using Portrait 400 and 800. And it is primarily because I don't believe that I am the most skilled at manually metering and these have a lot of latitude the, the the lab Richard photo lab can can fix my errors to make my photography look professional I also have this Ilford disposable camera I have one more and uh, I'm maybe gonna get to it I don't know we'll see over the trip cheers do you mind if I film the, the hot dog creation process there are a few foods that I will travel the world for they are foods that seem simple, but only exist in one place. The Icelandic hot dog is one of them. Rather than the North American style blend of discount meats, the Icelandic hot dog is made primarily of high quality Icelandic lamb. Get it with everything, crispy onions, regular onions, ketchup, remoulade, and brown mustard. Readily available at every gas station and coming in at around $3. Compare that to the expensive as fuck pizza that'll cost you somewhere between $30 to $40. You're, uh, you're having your ten, 10 hot dogs for pizza. That's the type of math you're gonna find on a middle school uh, test. Is that everything, guys? Oh, th this uh, this video is sponsored by Icelandic hot dogs. Get yours in Iceland today. Shout out to Ryan Reynolds and Obi Wan Kenobi. Hello. Yes, I'd like to rent a camper van. Okay, cool. Here's your camper van. Ooh, do you have anything with something else on the side? Hello. Uh, I'll have a combo of three. One Gordita Crunch, Mountain Dew. You says it's got those cinnamon twist things? Yeah, one of those, that's fine. That's everything. Thank you. Oh, wait. Vic is a city that's, uh, well, we'll call it a three hour drive from the airport. And I would 100% recommend that you rent your own car and you drive out this way. The first time that I came to Iceland, I spent way too much time in Reykjavik, the major city. And it is an incredible city, but at the end of the day, it's a city. You didn't come to Iceland to just experience city life. Vic is a little bit smaller. It has the conveniences. It has a grocery store and gas station and a few places to eat. But with a population of maybe around four or 500 people, you definitely feel like you're in a smaller city. So this camera has become the, uh, the black and white camera. So for the rest of the trip, until I change my mind, the AE-1 will be shooting 400 TX. The first shot in this roll. Canon R6. You can't hear me. The microphone's coming down. Is this weather sealed? That's cool, I like the square format. And I'm going to find Ektachrome. Ektachrome will typically give me a blue slash purple kind of cast. Um, it's also color positive film, so today it's kind of perfect because there's not a whole lot of dynamic range in the scene. If there was a lot of dynamic range, um, Ektachrome honestly handles highlights pretty well, but you just don't have as much play as something like uh, Portrait 400 where you can kind of do whatever you want in the film. 
I feel like this is the shot right here, though. But it wasn't the shot. Because Taylor loaded the film incorrectly. And it jammed. Oops. Good so, we, uh, we jammed the film here. <laughs> which unfortunately means that I thought I took uh, 36 exposures. But I actually took one exposure right here. Over and over and over again. And uh, as you can see, it's now been exposed to daylight. So, uh, womp womp. So we just checked into our Airbnb. And it's literally a fully functioning B&B that we have access to. So Alex has decided that we're going to do a resale on some of the rooms. So if, if you're interested in coming to stay in uh, room 102 or room 101, um, come on by. We're here in Vic. And uh, Welcome. Alex will take your, your money. My passwords right here if you need it. How much uh, for, for an evening? Uh, we're looking at about $800 a night. $800 a night? That seems reasonable, yeah. Pretty yeah, good. great. But you get a great view of Vic, so. All right, and this chair. Cinestill 50D is a film that I have not shot before. And again, a shout out to Grainy Days, Jason, a.k.a. Baxter's dad, a.k.a. The Film Goblin, for the recommendation on this. This turned out to be one of my favorite roles from the entire trip, including my favorite photo from the entire trip, which you'll see in just a moment. It's not that one, but I do like that photo. The, it's, it's coming at the end of this segment. Now the grand reveal, my favorite photo from the entire trip, right here. Didn't even jam the film this time. Be going pro next week. To switch gears entirely here for a minute, tourism in Iceland has had a really interesting progression since the early 2000s. Uh, we covered this in a show we did for Nikon. You can watch it on my channel if you want. Uh, but the most interesting part, I feel like, is this clip. How do you think Instagram has played a role in tourism here? I feel like photographers almost kind of led the first wave. I think it definitely did. But at the same time, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, everything was kind of popping up at the same time as Iceland was getting more and more famous, you can say. The tourism is amazing. the biggest industry in Iceland now. Yeah. Uh, the fishing is number two. The fishing was number one before. Exactly. When the bank crisis happened, you know, then of course they were talking about it in the news all over the world. Iceland got hit hard in 2008. Here's world famous photographer Manny Ortiz in Los Angeles to explain. Say I want you to give me $100 so that I can buy a new lens. If I say I'll pay you $105 back in a month, you probably pass. But if I say I'll give you $150 back, we'd probably have a deal. This is what the Icelandic banks were doing, offering incredible interest rates to foreign investors that were completely unsustainable and spending all their money. Here's Irene in a hot tub to explain the rest. Now a month goes by and the land still hasn't generated any cash. I still owe you money, so I find another friend and make a deal to borrow money I owe you from them. Maybe I pay that $225 to borrow the $150 and next month I'll spend $300 to borrow that $225 from someone else. You can see why this is a bit of a problem. Borrowing more money to pay back old debt, creating a huge bubble that was ready to explode. When the bubble did pop, it had a surprising outcome. Yes, foreign investors lost their money, but it brought a lot of worldwide media attention to Iceland. Through social media, a lot of people were now seeing stock photos of Iceland for the first time ever. And because of the bank collapse, it was wildly inexpensive to travel here. And as they say, no press is bad press. That was 2008, but that was first after the eruption the, in Eyjafjallajökull, the volcano, 2010. And then it started. And now we're back on this much less professional trip. So there's a big fashion thing going on here in Iceland. And uh, it's a thing that tourists get when they go to the store. They say, hey, I'm going to Iceland. So the store is like, oh, you need these adventure pants. And these, these pants that are like waterproof and they have like a reinforced like knee section or they have like a black part that goes down here. Adventure pants. We are on our way to do some more film photography. You could probably like add two waterfalls. Should, should be closer. No, not that close. Like you can take it out of the frame. We are on our way to do some more film photography at two waterfalls that you have certainly heard of and seen before. Thousands and thousands of photos probably in your lifetime. 
and uh, we're just kind of looking for good light on either of them and I think we're too early for Skoga Foss so we may continue on and kind of see what the lighting situation is uh, at the next waterfall and then return to Skoga Foss and potentially even climb the steps if Marshall is feeling up to the challenge. He has consumed 16 hot dogs today which is uh, a Marshall dozen. We have narrowly, <laughs> we maybe have three minutes a large bus large large tour bus we maybe have like five minutes of light we might not even have five minutes of light um, I think that the Sun Seeker app was a little bit off with where it placed the Sun but that's okay Taylor Jackson reporting here live on location at Skogafoss We've unfortunately missed all of the light on Skoga Foss. We, we saw it as we were rolling up. It's really windy. And uh, unfortunately, I don't know, maybe another time. Like M6, the 28 millimeter F2.8. My settings are one slash 1,000th of a second. F4 at Portra 400. These two blend nicely into the landscape. They very much match their uh, clothing to the rocks in the falls. Unfortunately, they are directly in my shot. So that photo is straight up big whatever, but fortunately this got us out of the house and put us on the correct road to end up at this photograph, something so magnificent that Marshall wouldn't even get out of the car to help film it. This is him sitting in the passenger seat. This is me with Fujifilm GA645W. And this is an image that I like a lot. We have the full insurance package, except for the undercarriage, and tires aren't covered. Like the fitness whole bread in my mouth. Right, Javik. How do you say it? <laughs> it's pronounced rich bitch juice. It's pronounced rich bitch juice. It's a uh, pink gin. Shout out, ALG. Who's that? In the kettle, we're making some uh, amazing local delicacies. Uh, potato snack pot, bacon and onion. And uh, what do you got? I got the uh, chow mein. Marshall's is looking pretty good. Mine, I don't know. Pro tip, bring a, a full power bar whenever you travel so you can charge only Marshall's drone because you only brought foam cameras that don't require charging. Marshall, would you like to have a little blacked out? What is this black death you keep talking about? Try it on. Why don't they classify it as like a gin or a vodka or something? Is this is this the same stuff we put in the truck? This is ethanol, isn't it? E85. I only drink high test. I don't smell it. Just drink it. Oh, there it is. What does that mean? What is that? What is that? <laughs> Alex, your shot of Black Death is here. Cheers, man. And like if you're just putting yeah, hamburger in a tagine. Would you like the burger tagine? Okay, we are uh, rolling. You ever drink Bailey's from a shoe? Today, the comparison that you've always been waiting for, uh, the, the Fujifilm medium format point and shoot GA645W versus this bag of paprika flavored potato chips. Which is better? Find out over the next minute. 
The Fuji GA645 is a point and shoot medium format camera. It's very simple to load the film, it's very simple to use. These are some of the images that were taken on this camera on this trip. And uh, yeah, that's all I guess we have to finish the comparison, right? And this is the paprika flavored potato chips. Let's see which is better, the potato chips or the Fuji GA645W. Potato chips are great, but I would probably recommend if you're looking for a camera to take photos, uh, to go for this and, and not the potato chips. Um, although both do serve their purpose, so maybe make the decision that's correct for you. Um, but my decision here is uh, probably the, the Fuji GA645W. One of my dreams has always been to golf in Iceland, but I don't want to do it in the summer. I want to come here in the winter when it is even more hostile conditions. Um, because I think it's going to be way funnier. So look forward to that in a new video, golfing in Iceland in the winter. Uh, if anyone wants to come, let me know in the comments because none of my friends are going to want to come. This is a nice course though. It opens with a par six. So it's a par six, 600 meter par six, but you have like a, I'm going to call that a 50 kilometer an hour backwind. So as soon as you put the ball up, it's just going to go. So that par six is probably more like a par three. It's also in meters, it's not in yards. Right, yeah, They're pretty yeah. close, right? Yeah. Um. They actually put volcanic ash on the uh, on the butter. Volcanic ash is very healthy, healthy for you. Who's telling you this thing? All right, here we have the traditional Icelandic lamb soup. Marshall wanted to go for the Thai curry, was it? You get this, you get the $20 lamb soup. I, I assume lamb is just roadkill here. Well, let's do a cave talk. Here we are in the cave, Low Canny, with Fuji 400H. Fuji 400H is the film that my digital presets are all modeled after. A photographer by the name of Jose Villa from Southern California kind of turned me on to the, the Fuji 400H look. I'm gonna say maybe 2008, 2009. So as you may know, this film stock has been discontinued, which means there are no future roles of 400H. So anything that exists now exists. Most of it is already leaning towards expiry. Um, I had used all of my roles of 400H and Joel Percy at BJ Photo in Waterloo, the local camera shop that I shop at all the time, had one remaining role that he offered to me to come out to make this video. So shout out to Joel. So go follow him on Instagram and enjoy the rest of the video. Doing something, and now I'm rapping with a crew or something. I guess the track don't really stick unless he's gluing something, and I never fit the shoe until I do or something. Yo, 
Bracing myself like teeth, boy, it's the same old route On some new concrete, but homie, these tunes make you get a new ID I'm trying to do my thing, but the commute ain't cheap I'm on a two-day week for all this rap these days And we can still pitch the track to all the wack DJs We're singing happy days, wearing tacky J's And I'm just pumped that I made it out my nappy phase Let's go We can turn the whole world around I'm in the backseat, really trying to hold it down And if you up now from the lost and found And get your hands up high I have seen glaciers before, but I've never been able to walk up to them. Marshall has opted to fly from on top of a vehicle rather than a perfectly flat surface over here that is not metal. And I have to do the drone dance. Absolute pandemonium. Not only is it the busiest parking lot I've ever seen here, uh, there's also not a whole lot of icebergs. Usually it is very much an iceberg parking lot out here. And uh, yeah, I would say that this is one tenth, maybe even less of the normal uh, population of bergs out here. We got some over here. romance comedy Viking Christmas special uh, it's also an app hey Marshall hey what's new I'm just really sick of going on raids why they're all so far away <sighs> okay it's always windy and wet and raining fine you stay home we'll go on the raid without you we don't really need you it's fine <laughs> We decided to make the entire set out of paper mache, which in retrospect, uh, it's a little too wet here for uh, that type of material. That's a Viking high reach fork truck. It's got the big tires on it too. Checked into our Airbnb here in Hoff. And our host left us a wonderful gift. Hope you're prepared for it. Here it comes chocolate and Pringles. That's it, that's the story. Sorry if you're expecting something more dramatic. I'm starting to think that I may have overestimated the amount of film that I needed to bring. This might be significantly more than I'll get to this trip.
cute. Damn. Adventure pants. Adventure pants. Right. Can we see the guy? That guy knows how to party. Well, that's dramatic. Looks good. <laughs> the Contax T3 is a camera, it's a point and shoot camera, and one that I have been using on this trip. I haven't been using it as much as I thought that I would have. Uh, I love the idea of having just a small point and shoot that you can actually put inside of your pocket and that has pretty much the best quality that you can get out of any point and shoot that's ever been made. Uh, it's 35 millimeter Zeiss lens and it's really incredible. Uh, but what I found on this trip specifically is that I have so many cameras that kind of overlap that I haven't been using it as much. So here are some images that I've taken with it. And uh, yeah, that's the, that's the context. T3 talk. That was it? If you've ever wondered what the greatest sounding truck in the world is, it is this truck here. Off to Oxy, RIP Juice World. I am titanium. Last night we were researching a few things to do along our drive today and it actually changed the entire course of the trip and ended up bringing us to my favorite city of this entire trip that I had never been to, never even heard of, and absolutely cannot pronounce. In this city, allegedly you can get up to one meter away from a puffin and that sounded pretty cool. It's late season, we didn't know how many puffins were still around, but we figured roll the dice and drive up there. One of Iceland's main exports is actually marshmallows, so if you're in your grocery store at home and you see some marshmallows, know that they probably came from Iceland. We've just discovered a brand new Icelandic landmark, Icelandic Mount Rushmore behind me here. It's not on any maps. You're not gonna find this if you search on the internet. You gotta come to us to bring you the best. Next up, more excitement. located the most cliche film photography object that I've ever seen. A rusty boat, a rusty wooden boat out of the water against a backdrop of rust and sheet metal. It's kind of amazing. I'm using the 28 millimeter F 2.8 uh, and I'm going to say the word tones over and over again while I photograph this boat. So I found for sure my favorite composition so far of the trip and I'm hoping that the 90 is exactly what I need. I got Marshall to test it out on the R6 here and he says that 70 is just a little bit too short. So I'm hoping that this comes together perfectly. Do I see an Icelandic Ron Swanson? I think I do. I'm pretty excited to relive my middle school years with uh, this experience at our hotel tonight. Marshall brought all of his equipment to, to play a show tonight for the... Do you want to see my view? 
beautiful rolling hills and a big black marshmallow and one barbecue. What do the marshmallows taste like, the black ones? Black licorice. Today, we're in a small fishing village in Iceland. I have with me the Leica M6. We're shooting Ektachrome 100. Let's go, shoot a roll, one roll. You know the, the rules? It's not that show. I'm honestly really happy that we found our way to this town. This wasn't on the original plan and the walks just around town have been some of my favorite of the entire trip. I also like the fact that there is one singular tour bus that kind of comes into this town. I'm assuming in the summer and puffin season, it's a lot busier, but this time of year, there's really no one around. The entire city just looks like a movie set. After a few hours here, I'm starting to realize that every single individual element was placed here by a set designer, and uh, just the photographic opportunities here are really kind of weirdly endless. Perfect uh, parking by the tour bus. Lots of room, lots of room. We're here on the east side of Iceland. I've changed from my predator color jacket to something a little more appropriate. We're here to see some puffins. Puffin season definitely ended two or three weeks ago, uh, but we did see some at Black Sand Beach and we're hoping to see a few here. Usually when you're seeing puffins, they're up on cliffs. Apparently here you can kind of walk right up to there. They got the little puffin holes just kind of all around and there's a little boardwalk. We were here earlier, we saw no puffins, but then we searched on Google and it says that puffins are either active in the morning around 7 a.m. or around 1800 hours, 6, 6 p.m. Uh, so we're here, it is 5.55, so we're right on time. So I'm hoping the puffins are on time as well, uh, or they've just all left uh, this area, which would be unfortunate, but let's go find out. Thirty-five seconds. We watched a puffin go into a hole, and he or she emerged with their puffin friend. Did a little photo shoot, and then uh, back in there, back in their nest. That was pretty cool. Puffins, the corgis of the sky. You see, this is funny as hell too. Like the noise he makes, like starts to get indigestion after eating like too much mandarin. Like, go away. <laughs> I challenge you to find a more Icelandic scene than this. A dog eating a fish. Hey, brother. No, you have like a full fish, dude. Maybe this scene is more Icelandic. <laughs> As you've seen throughout the video, the truck scene in this country is really absolute next level. This truck included.
And this is Marshall's first buffet since uh, the world got a bit weird. He feels very comfortable. You can see it in his eyes. This is my white wine because I'm allergic to barley, a true failure to the human race. Apparently there is a uh, dessert buffet coming up after the concert. Then Marshall and I went to find drinks at another restaurant in town. There's only three restaurants in town. There it is. Do you feel like you're in a high school auditorium? Yeah. So we discovered why it smells like a high school gymnasium. Yeah, mine. Perfect. Where was it? In the gym. Hey, finally toothpaste that you can eat. Great. Just what I've been waiting for. Got some eggs. Got some oats. Got Marshall. Brother. The oats. I had a few frames left in the Provia roll, so I figured I would take some accidentally out of focus images of some objects around the hotel. Very out of focus, this, this, this guy. What we're going to be doing here is a traditional Marshall sits here and flies his drone while we drive up this pass to get some really nice uh, windy road driving shots. I'm sitting here, I, I just feel... I think to really sell this, we need to be on a dirt road. Now we look like true adventurers in a Toyota. Round four. We are on our way to a place called Lemon, which got a great recommendation from Jason. I've got some good news and I've got some bad news for you. The good news is I have found the best smoothie in the entire goddamn world. The bad news, it will literally ruin all other smoothies for you. And rather than actually navigating to a city, we're just gonna navigate right to, right to the smoothies. So let's uh, go. Three hour and 41 minute drive to smoothies. I'm pretty committed at this point. Did, did he recommend a certain smoothie? Number four, which is called the Vanilla Flirt or something cheesy like that. Though the only thing this smoothie is flirting with is my bank account as I'm prepared to empty it and sell all my cameras for more smoothies. The first sip of this stuff that I had, I passed out for 12 seconds and had to go lay down. I'm honestly not being paid to endorse the crap out of them, but uh, Lemon, if you're watching, uh, call me. We're three hours and 41 minutes away from enjoying our first lemon smoothie. Shout out Jason. Shout out Lemon. Shout out Machine Gun Kelly. The musician, not the criminal. I found something that reminds me of a photo that is maybe, at least to my knowledge, the most expensive photo ever sold. And it is a very simple photo that involves a very simple subject, which is water, fresh water. Humans, I feel like when we see a photo of fresh water, we just like it a little bit more because we're subconsciously attracted to fresh water. Uh, mountains too. We did an interview with Trey Ratcliffe a couple years ago in New Zealand uh, where he kind of talked about the, the pillars of what make 
a very attractive image that you don't know why you like it, but you just like it. And a lot of the human elements such as fresh water and mountains to see distance and uh, trails and pathways and roads uh, to know that there's some sort of safety uh, all kind of contribute to just people liking images and not knowing why. This uh, photo here I feel like is, is maybe one of those. Green grass, fresh water, little mountains in the background. And I'm going to shoot this on Provia. I've actually changed my mind. Since the composition is really, really nice, uh, I'm actually going to go for larger resolution. So Richard Photolab has some larger negatives to scan from to, to make my masterpiece come to real life. And then it'll sell an auction for $42 billion and I'll retire and just continue doing the exact same thing we're doing right now. As a general PSA for Iceland, don't step on the moss. Walk around the moss, find spaces to not stand on the moss because your feet will kill a moss. And the moss is nice. Look at how nice that is. It's nice moss. And it wasn't long before we had another distraction on the way to smoothies. Here we are at a genuine Icelandic fart hole. So it certainly doesn't smell good here, but the photographic opportunities, very nice. Macro bug photographic opportunities, also very nice. I would consider this place to be the opposite of what an essential oil is. Alright, that's all for the Icelandic party boys. On to our lemon smoothies. I want to give Richard Photo Lab another quick shout out here because they absolutely nailed my preferences. This is a scan that they gave me. There was nothing that I would do to that image. There was nothing that I would do to change it whatsoever. I might say that this is the nicest color for Land Rover. It's quite beautiful. We're here at Lemon. And then, an absolute disaster. After four hours of driving, we have arrived at Lemon for smoothies, but unfortunately they were out of avocado, which means they could not make the number four vanilla flirt. Fortunately, there is another lemon uh, just closer to our hotel, so we are going to uh, enjoy our Elvis and then head over there. lemon we're hoping has avocado there's avocado on the sign we're out of avocado too so we'll never get he's laughing at us through the window there's no avocados at all on the island this is there's a avocado shortage after being denied our smoothies we headed to the liquor store adventure pants the human slider marshall angus Adventure Pants What we have here is our quintessential boat scene. Uh, reflections, if you wanted to get a tripod out and do a longer exposure, you definitely could and the water would become almost completely uh, reflective. Um, you could also just shoot it off your cell phone. Use your cell phone as a reflective surface, right? We're not gonna do either of those today. We're just gonna take the photo. Oh, hi there. I've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. Puffins out of ten. Three.
here we are. In our Icelandic fishing village. There is no one around. We are right across the street from Spankin U Hof, which is a great business name. And we found the most red thing that we could find to talk about this Canon 8E1. This was my dad's, or this I guess maybe still is if he wants it back. You can have it back if you're watching this dad. You can you can have this camera back if you want. The Canon 8E1 is a pretty simple camera. Uh, it does have a battery in it which means that there is a light meter and basically what that light meter is going to tell you is your f-stop that you should be at. So if you're at maybe say one slash one thousandth of a second shutter speed and at 400 ISO you look through your viewfinder and it's going to drop the needle down and it's going to say you should be shooting this at f8. Uh, I typically kind of look around the scene and I figure what I actually want to expose for and I make that my exposure and then I manually adjust. Um, you can also set I guess depending on the lens that you have uh, you can set this to automatic as well but I prefer to be a little bit more in control and uh, on this trip this has been my black and white camera so I have 400 tri-x in it all trip. I didn't intend that for that to be the thing, but that's how it ended up happening. And this 50 millimeter lens, I feel like this is kind of the perfect kit. If you're looking for a first film camera, I would recommend going on eBay and finding one of these or go to your local camera shop or ask a friend. There are so many of them out there in the world still, and it is a great way to learn photography. And that is all I have to say about the Canon 81. We're going to go back to the, uh, I, don't, I don't know what, it feels like a movie set with how not busy everything is although if it was a movie set there would be craft services and a thousand people standing over here and then emptiness but right now just nothing can i get a hoya get it <laughs> did you see the camper they flipped the bitch. That's a baby troll. What's going on here? The troll women look normal. But the troll baby is concerning. Come to Iceland. Practice your ski jumps. I'd like to take a moment here to talk about how messed up the pig is on the bonus logo. I've noticed it before. I've come home with bags because I think it's the greatest. But, like, really, what's the story here? I need to, I'm going to look it up right now. And if someone knows, please chime in in the comments. I would love to know the story. According to the internet, it's just a drunken piggy bank. That's the story. I feel a little let down. We've just discovered that we've been here for about six hours and we don't actually know the name of the city that we're in. Okay. I think that you know, because I probably put the, the text when we, when we entered this place, but uh, Marshall's looking it up right now because we actually don't know. Skagastrond. Skagastrond. Lying in a coma. Dang. Dreaming bow. Being ho. Howling at the moon. Lying in a coma. Lying down. In a snooze for a cut. Somewhere in the woods I dropped. I get blood pressure on my back when you tell me I should pull up. I did. Tell me ain't some muscle bands when my plans get I, I don't really mess with jungle cats They never wanna see me white storming now I get blood pressure on my back when you tell me I should pull up Doing pull ups in the park Tell me should I fall back It's loud and it's strong This phone number doesn't even exist This is the fake TV phone numbers no wonder there are no people here. This city doesn't exist. Marshall, unfortunately, you're gonna have to cook us lunch since there are no staff members working. I poured the beer, so. All right. Well done. No problem. I like peeps. Sour peeps, though? Yeah. Oh. I didn't see you there. We are going to go on a bit of a photographic adventure over to the restaurant that we were at earlier. And it's up until 1 a.m., which seems insane to us because there is no one in this city. And uh, I assume that that means that the place just it, it gets lit after 11. 11 to 1 a.m., I bet, is a full rave scene. They bring in Diplo and they bring in Atari Teenage Riot as well, which is a bit of a reference that... I didn't expect to make part of this video, but we did. Let's go take some photos. That's great. 
Couldn't tell you what happened to that film, but I actually kind of like it. These are photos that only my father-in-law, Ron Coulter, will appreciate. Everyone else is like, yeah, those boats. Ron will be like, I like that. That finishes off the Portra 800 roll. There are only a few frames left on that. I'm going to switch to a secret film that no one's ever heard about in the entire history of time and no, it's not Portra 400. It is different than that. There's a 50 ISO film. I'm gonna set 50 ISO right now. Otherwise, I'm gonna forget. I'm gonna shoot everything metered for 800. And now, the reveal of the secret film. What could it be? So we'll begin the process of photographing with this now. I have the first frame in mind already. Maybe I'll put this back in that canister. We awoke the next morning to head to our last Airbnb for the entire trip. One more night. And I saw this beautiful image and then I forgot that I had Sin Still 50D in there that's just gonna make everything look like it's from the 70s. Which is cool when you want it. Like right here. This is a great shot from 1975. The other shot with the water. One of those blues. And now I can never have them. You're my boy, Blue. I bought this drink from Marshall, this collab yesterday, because I know that he likes strange, unusual drinks. I didn't realize that there are 105 milligrams of caffeine in it. And also there's fish collagen, uh, marine collagen is what they call it. Uh, caffeine, vitamins, and sweetener. Zero calories, but tastes kind of fishy. Are you going to finish your collab or are you done with it? It's kind of fishy. Also stoked that our Airbnb came with this one of one edition Banksy. We waved goodbye to Spankin' U Hoff and headed on our way to the East Coast. Wait, the West Coast. Yeah. What are you watching? Horses? <laughs> Kind of cheating with this boat. It's obviously a tourist attraction, but it does look pretty good. And if you ever wonder where they got the name for Tinder, it's actually from this boat here in Iceland. We all know how I feel about wooden boats, especially wooden boats in nature. Check out my new Shutterstock portfolio. Here's more information about the boat if you're interested. Do you know where I can get any magenta ink for my Canon Pixma printer? Oh, it's inkjet printer. Do you know where I can get it? No. Oh, convenient, it's right here. Magenta, that's me, thank you. Take your shoes off. entered into a zone where it is just all rocks that they're just scattered all up on the hill so whenever the volcano went off basically it just spewed all of these rocks out here it's uh it's pretty crazy to think that all of these gigantic rocks are just flying through the sky at some point in history
know what they say? When the pigs try to get at you, park it like it's hot. This is the last time I let you book a boat tour on Kijiji. He said he was experienced. Moving into the last day, after drinking a bottle of gin, we decided it would be a great idea to load all of the cameras with 400TX. So 400TX on the AE-1, 400TX on the Leica, and 400TX on the Fujifilm GA645. The only survivor was the Contax T3, which was still loaded with Provia. It's the last day of the trip and Marshall has decided to only eat pasta and also demands that we can only listen to Taylor Swift 1989 on all six hours of driving today. Experiment. After convincing Marshall that 1989 is in fact a better album, we headed off into our final day. That sounds too dramatic. Final day of the trip, not of life. We just arrived at a brand new waterfall. Uh, it's just been installed. They turned it on this morning actually, and it's the first one that is completely geothermal powered. Uh, so very good for the environment. And because it's day one, it's just like, it's really busy here. And here is the most professional moment of the trip not having any sort of ND filter for this GA645. So I took Marshall's, he has the Peter McKinnon two to five stop, and I took it, rolled it to five stops, and took this photo holding the filter in front of the lens, and I like it a lot. I didn't actually have a lens that was wide enough to capture that scene. And while I do enjoy hitting up the, kind of those number one tourist spots, I actually prefer things like this, just finding compositions off the side of the road. And I feel like there's more fulfillment, at least personally for me in that, uh, than going to all of the spots that I've seen a thousand times in other photos. And now I'll immediately contradict myself. So Taylor, what are we, uh, we gonna be doing now <laughs> that we've just completed the nice church photos? So the, the church photos are done. I've taken seven photos and I realized that they're actually on my 90 millimeter lens and I didn't extend it. So the photos won't work at all. And I was going by the 35 millimeter frame line. So, uh, Let's go back to the car and uh, do a few more frames. I'm gonna wait here. Can we just take a moment here to appreciate black and white film? Sheesh, am I right? And also that's the straight out of, or I guess not really straight out of whatever, that's the scan that Richard Photo Lab gave me back. So yeah, we'll move on now. Brief stop on the film photography black and white tour. Uh, we're in Reykjavik and we're going to get the best hot dog in town. It opens at 10 a.m. and we're here at exactly 10 a.m. And then we're going to go to the church to do some black and white photography of the church. And then maybe the most exciting part of the day, we're going to Lemon, which is a place that Grainy Days Jason, AKA Baxter's dad, AKA The Hammer, AKA The Film Goblin. He says that this smoothie will change our lives forever. And we're hoping that they have avocados here in Reykjavik because they did not have avocados up in the north at the two lemon locations that we stopped at. We're trying really hard to get this smoothie. Let's go get a hot dog. It's really important that you order the hot dogs with everything. It means fried onions, regular onions on the bottom, as well as remoulade, mustard, ketchup. I think that's it. It's a great breakfast. We've arrived at Elon Musk's space church here in Reykjavik, and we've realized it's Sunday, so it's a lot busier than it usually is. There were a few cars parked at the base of the church, so I figured the easiest way to make them disappear, not Photoshop, just hiding behind this bush over here. One of these was shot with a Leica. One of them was shot with a $150 Canon AE-1. Can you tell which one is which? Don't say E1. Get it. Resisting our urge to stop for second breakfast for a $45 Taco Bell, we continued to Lemon. We've made it to Lemon. Now the moment of truth, whether they have avocados or not here in Reykjavik, I'm hopeful. Oh my gosh, there they are. Good news. We're getting a free song while our smoothie is made. I had to sit down. And this is what our tour culminates with. Smoothies from Lemon. It's really good. He was right. It was worth the tour. I'm tagging. Granny Days, aka Jason, aka Fifty Shades of Jason, 
aka the film Goblin on a photo of this and I feel bad kind of doing it because it's just kind of bragging that we're but he should know right I don't know he'll appreciate it I think he really wants to the world to know to sh to share in the in the energy that is that's limit. fair because if it gets big enough here right there would be a chance that probably LA would be their flagship location in the USA it's true so I'm doing them a service We'll leave it at that. Full of smoothies, we headed to the airport. I packed my photography skills in my blue duffel bag. We headed to the lounge for the absolute worst pizza of the entire trip. There it is. One bite, you know the rules. It looks like pizza, but... Exit through the elaborate gift shop, and we're off. Marshall drinks 27 gin and tonics on the flight home. We see Greenland and eat these gigantic asparagus is asparagi. Back to Greenland, back to asparagus in the sky, back to Greenland and asparagus one last time. I honestly didn't shoot nearly as much as I expected to and definitely not nearly as much as if I would have brought my digital camera. So uh, yeah, off to the lab and I'll have results in a few days, but you've already seen them. So it's no surprise to you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on this strange and unusual adventure. Please exit through the gift shop. There is a link in the description to the shirts that you saw throughout this video. Thanks to Richard Photo Lab for scanning everything. And uh, that's that's all. See you next time. Tried to forget you on a Friday night. Match some money like the bands I like. It leans in and a dodge ride ride. I miss my Something